Hey everyone, Chicken Eater 3, Shiny Frost, we're here to bring you the Season 144 Endgame Preview. So this is the episode where we look at everyone's Endgame builds. I think about 90-95% of the players have their final build. So we're going to take a look at uh, what our competitive players are doing. And uh, also make some speculations about some people who look like they're about to go to by level 27. So before we get into that, how are you guys doing? Uh, well, for me, I feel like my, my journey this season has been the best since I've come back, actually. I feel really good about how I've been able to maneuver through the by levels. I did have that one very uncomfortable day. I think I recorded that day, too. It was, I had like the, uh, was it like the knight and the, not knight, the cav and the strongman. That was a disaster. But other than that, everything else was cool. Um, it's been, it's been pretty good so far. That said, I've probably just manifested a loss tomorrow. So uh, I'll be in the HD rage channel. <laughs> nice. Who are you losing to? If you could, if you had to lose to someone. Oh man, let's see. I got not even on the spot. Hey, top 10. Who's in the top 10 or 11 right now? Hmm. <laughs> Might be fun to lose to like something anti-meta, something maybe a, a a crit from. Actually, I did get backdoored by Azrael um, when he had that uh, offensive knight or not knight uh, Duke. Yeah. Maybe like getting oh. backdoored by someone. Maybe like a counter situation where like my knight gets countered and then a deaf knight kills my bow. That could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ishani, what's up? How's your season going? Good. I've been about as clean as I can be for having 10 attacks. I've been self-conscious ever since Frost called me out in the general board the other day saying that 10 was no man's land. And I've just been thinking like, man, there's no way I'm going to recover from 10. Like I'm starting to feel that. But outside of that, it's been going well. I caught a, an executioner in the merchant, which, mm. you know, that, that put me a day ahead on my executioner. My original plan was to keep the berserker as like my primary just to do something different from what happened last season, just to see how it went. But now that I have a executioner that's two or three levels ahead of it, I I would be silly to start pitting that from behind. So mm -hmm. I'm going primary on my executioner. Good. Everyone seems to be giving you crap. Like <laughs> Frost telling you you're a no man's land with the attacks. <laughs> I'm telling you you're a no man's land with the pickleball. <laughs> no man's land. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I say if you beat me though, man. So just stay ahead and you can shut me up real quick. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for me, like everything's been fine. Uh, today I maxed out and I'm going to try to force myself to max out every day. Uh, this season is a lot more comfortable than the previous season. Uh, I did not make that like mistake ridden day uh, when I transitioned. I think transitioning with two mercs is pretty challenging because you kind of have to pick one sort of section of your triangle that's missing and then you just can't attack some of the players that attack that missing section of your triangle. So that was weird. I did not film that day because uh, I spent like an hour doing those attacks probably. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, now that all, all, all things said and done, pretty comfortable with myself and uh, I think my build this season is a smarter version of what I did last season. So before we get into some game updates, how are your alliances going? Like what's the uh, what's the alliance vibe that like? Knights of the Round has been pretty Speaking. fun. Lancelot has been leading the nine attack pack and that has been fun for everybody to root for. So that's what the nice. entire focus is on Lancelot pretty much right now. <laughs> yeah, guy's a total gamer. <laughs> hey, he's been he's just been playing out of his mind. He's killing it. Yeah. It's like a different person. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's and, been uh, really cool to see that with him for sure. Yeah. And uh, how's um, the, the uh, Illu uh, Yeah, no, Illuminati, it's been it's been interesting. Um been working with a few people in the alliance. We have some new blood, so we welcome Josher and J. Mai, formerly known as Tonka, into the uh, fold. Uh, I've been working with J. Mai a bit. He's struggled the last couple of days, but we had a really good session today. Um, you know, him and I worked through sort of uh, his attacks, and I think uh, you know I've, I've got some expectations for him this season. So if you're watching, you better keep it up. Remember what I told you this morning. Uh, we've been using our Discord a little bit more. I think in the past we've we're sort of that like old vet team that like we all kind of know what we're doing and so 
we're not necessarily like the chattiest bunch about oh hey what are you doing here what are you doing there but uh I've been a little bit more hands-on this season with the Alliance and, and really want them to use the Discord a bit more to facilitate conversations, so I've enjoyed that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we've got a, a good group of people. Uh, the vibes are good. And uh, we'll see how it all sorts itself out at the end. Awesome. Yeah, you have two of the more unique players this season, so we'll get into that later, so don't don't close this video. Yeah, Illuminati is interesting. So chicken, yeah, chicken's right. also pretty cool. Like we have, I think the biggest concentration of two Merc rushers for nine attack. I'm not pressuring them to do that. It just so happened that like Cheech, Bagel, and, and the Rad and myself uh, did the uh, the two Merc nine attack rush, uh, which is really interesting. And then Bagel hit 27, and uh, first to 27. I think that was really nice. Uh, it's been really clean. And so we'll see what the potential with by level 27 is this season. So let's uh, do a quick thing about the game updates. We have some new stuff on the museum. So we have a past winners section where you can look at uh, how many shiny medals YB has won and then uh, Jib's <laughs> other various accomplishments. Uh, you can see it's like 90% Jib. Um, but this is, uh, this is what winners of HD look like. And uh, it's kind of a shame uh, Melchi isn't playing, or is it Melky? I'm not sure. Um, but uh, maybe they'll come back in the future. Maybe they'll look at that email. So that's one really neat update. Uh, another neat update is that uh, the homepage now shows the jousting matches, gladiator pit, and archery range. It looks like you're on a portal for your like schoolwork, and you're just like haven't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you haven't, you haven't done nothing. Uh, but it looks like yeah, shiny has to attack still. So we're just viewing this on uh, shiny's account, I guess. Yeah. So it reminds you that you have uh, jousting remaining, glad pits, and archery range, which is uh, pretty informative. I would say that's that's pretty cool. And then uh, the last thing is uh, we want to show you the elation calculator. Uh, it was made by uh, one of our own players, Elation, uh, who just got back into the game. And I think he said he took like some sick days because he wasn't feeling too well and he just made this. So uh, thank you so much for making it. It's got really cool visuals. Uh, do you want to play with it a little bit and see how it works? I mean, the coolest part is you could just, you know, you don't have to go through, choose your armor. It's probably the most effective tool for doing anything like this. You know, Lancelot has had spreadsheets in the past, but they were yeah. a little cumbersome to manipulate, but here yeah. you just choose the heavy armor, media, you know, you can switch the armor real easily, and it's got all the stats right there. It's the fastest, best input of anything we've had in the game in 20 years, so it's you awesome. question, how, does he, how did he code the level 56 helm? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if we go into 56, and then it was the helmet. So is it the medium one? I don't know. Minus. I have no clue. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything is adding stats. Yeah. So we'll All see. Right. Yeah, we'll have to see. Is it 56? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me double check. I'm 99% I'm sure. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's the uh, tempered plate helm. <laughs> it's the, it's the level fifty six helm. It's just it's, it's pulling forty eight helms here. So let me go up to fifty seven. Maybe something is just off. Now these are only, it only goes up to forty eight for the helmets. It looks like so maybe there's some data missing. Uh, okay, I see, I see. All right. Well, uh, yeah. it's wool centric. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, mercs don't really get up that high. So, actually, you probably could get a merc that high. Like, if you just started with a short bowman and you never replaced it. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I have six slots. I, one of them could be a short bowman. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah that, 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 that's kind of nonsensical all right let's look at some builds so we have three categories of builds we have by level 27 we have by level 20 and then we have donut so donut gets his own category because 
for the longest time, he led people into believing that he was staying at 14, but then it looks like he's transitioning. So not really sure where he's going, but we just put him in a separate category because his path is so different. So by level 27, I think the first guy to talk about is definitely Jib. Uh, so Donut messaged everyone in the Discord today, and he said, how scared are you guys that uh, the guy ranked number one is hitting by level 27 tomorrow? And I think like, I think currently Azrael is number one, but uh, Jib was number one, the last reset, I believe. And uh, yeah, monster by level 27. So he's got four Merc slots, and it looks like, uh, yeah, you can tell that when he's keeping his Duke that something is something is up with his build. Yeah, that Duke is a dead giveaway. So with four slots, what do you think he's going to do? Like, what do you think he's going to transition into? Will he have more slots, or will he keep these? I can see him just keeping the four slots. Um... You know, I look at Jib as sort of the, the mad scientist of, of HD, um, and he kind of makes a lot of different things work. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if he used the Chainsman. Uh, I know that that's been used in the past by other players. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I think he's going to keep the four Mercs. I think he's going to want to place competitively uh, with by level 27. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Shiny, any guesses on what this mad scientist is up to here? Yeah, I think we'll probably see something similar to what Bagel did, but on a smaller scale. We'll have something that will <laughs> counter the meta. It will be his goal. He'll probably have some whips or some knives in there, and it'll be an offensive melee. I don't want to call it yeah. crapshoot, but crapshoot. <laughs> yeah, offensive melee is tricky. And uh, yeah, what Bagel did last season was just simply overkill. I don't think she needed that many mercs. It was just like the, the level of uncertainty. So it's like, okay, I'm going to have four Chainsmen now. Um, but Chainsmen damage was buffed. All Whitman damage was buffed. So uh, perhaps this is the right opportunity to try it out and see how it fares in the competitive field. So then for by level 27, uh, Bagel has 100% hit by level 27. I think today she played her second day uh, with by level 27. Uh, it's basically the, sh the four shard build from last season, but she kept the Knight because uh, the Baron does not go negative speed. It's very, very stubborn. And so I think keeping the Knight was a smart move. It's the same thing as like keeping the Executioner, if you're doing the mass mounted sort of setup uh, from uh, before, the, and, and then, you know, it kind of proved to be not effective. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so that was, uh, that's 27. And then we have a few maybes. We have Nova, Ivory, and Scotty Dog. So here's Nova, and uh, it kind of gives it away because there's a Legionnaire in there and a Duke with a Knight. So this looks like it's still pivoting. Yep, right here, the Enforcer. And then uh, who do we have next here? We have Ivory. So Ivory has uh, some babies here. And, and then a Strongman. It's just this random Strongman. Interesting. Yeah. No idea what's going to happen. Maybe they're just hoping for a uh, merchant something, you know. Maybe Jib's mercs are looking good. Yeah. This reminds me of an old school sort of transition. Like a lot of times back, like many years ago, you would keep like sort of a fixture, uh, the strongest pun not intended part of your setup <laughs> and try and build around that. And then once you felt like you had enough security, you'd replace it. But I just... I don't know if they're hoping that the whip's going to outpace the strongman and, and provide more value. Uh, I don't know about that, but uh, maybe to your point, they're waiting for merchant mercs, right? We're going to see if yeah. you want to hit the market. Yeah, because I know ivory merchants hard in Yorkshire. Yes. So and yeah, the transition is very similar that. there, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they were uh, looking out for other mercs in there. And then the last one we have is Scotty Dog. So Scotty Dog has the Bagel Archer. So we know he has the Bagel Archer because we told her to allocate to agility. Um, we were like, <laughs> okay, what is like the, the, the least useful stat you can allocate to? And I think it would have been like, okay, if it was like two agility, one defense, and one HP or something. 
but we're like, okay, just uh, uh, like grief your mercs because uh, we were kind of uh, wanting to deter people from uh, by level, you know, 11 daily attacks, slower by level hit into buying these mercs. So that's the uh, bagel archer. And then the rest is uh, there's an enforcer, uh, a knight, and a duke. So this seems kind of transition y too. Yeah, that's interesting. And, uh, wow, that composite bowman is level 17. <laughs> yeah, no, that caught me off guard today when I spied Scotty. I know that Scotty's picked up like a couple of dukes uh, on the merchant already this season. So he's, he's had a pretty good season at the merchant. And it just goes to show that if you invest the time and you're lucky enough, you can pick up a merc that can really change the trajectory of your season, right? Yeah. Like if he had to raise a new bowman right now, you know, like... I'm sure his attacks today went a lot better than they would have if he didn't have it. Yeah, yeah. So but, uh, th this this build has really really thin front line. Basically, yes, the only agreed. thing guarding the bow is the one enforcer. Exactly, and that doesn't even have a ton of agility right now either. And from an accuracy standpoint, it's not gonna fulfill his intended purpose, right? I think knowing Scotty over the years, he's always tried to like zag when everyone zigs, and he's the kind of player that would would want to pick up an enforcer to hopefully like print um axman but with 67 agility as of last reset i don't think that's really going to be super impactful at this point mm -hmm. yeah yeah because accuracy definitely needs some work but it's level eight it's got room for growth and uh, yeah yeah hopefully he grows it in a in a good direction that will help him so Agreed. those are the by level 27 players that we've kind of noticed of course Anybody can go by level 27. Uh, we saw PJM in the uh, in the museum with by level 23. So I assume that she will eventually get to by level 27 as well. So there's that. And then uh, maybe we can check out Donut. Donut in, is in his own category here. So this is Donut with the by level 14, except he looks like he sold the Duke and the Legionnaire, one of the Legionnaires, the weaker one. So what's going on here? Is he like going half and half? I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I think it looks like he's transitioning. Maybe he's <laughs> did some reconsidering because I know like, you know, he, he did um, speak very publicly about, you know, sticking to Bible 14 and um, he did a bunch of calculations. But um, I think as you know, the by level 20 crew hit their level 16 arrows, he realized that he might not be able to keep up. And it looks like the only reason why he would sell that Duke is to pick up something that would seal the back door better. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like if, if you sold that, what are you selling that for? Hopefully it's not the bagel night. <laughs> no, 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 the bagel still has a night. Never mind. It's not, the, it can't be the bagel night. Yeah, that's um, right. Cause they kept the night. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see tomorrow. So uh, yeah, definitely, definitely see you tomorrow. Uh, spy, spy donut. Uh, don't get uh, don't get lazy. I do yep. think it's interesting though. I do want to say about him before we move on. Yeah, there is. If we were to sort of label his strategy, I don't know if he intended to do this, but it's almost like it's a delayed um, yeah. rush. So he did a buy level rush, and then he pivoted real hard to to stack on attacks. And then if he does settle into buy level twenty. It does make me think if he were to have settled into by level 20 a little sooner how would that look like i i don't know him playing this way and not just going right to 20 it kind of made me think a little bit like i don't know how that would be in future seasons but if he did it a little sooner but yeah i think he... yeah i think it's kind of a hard sell like i would it would be very hard to convince me to play like that uh, mm -hmm. i just think it's better to spend more time with your mercs so if you if you have the ability to hit faster just hit faster um, yeah because like the attacks later in the season are worth more anyway so you make up a lot of ground anyways so like the amount sure. of xp i'm conceding playing like with nine attacks is like peanuts compared to you know what we're earning at the end so, absolutely yeah i i don't know it we'll see we'll see we'll see what he transitions to uh, maybe he found something in the merchant uh, maybe he has some babies. Uh, we will find out. We will find out. So we split the by level 20 people into three main groups. 
uh, 11 attack, 10 attack, and 9 attack. And the reason we did that was the 11 attack played with a different cadence, and they generally have lower level mercs, but more experience. Uh, the exception being this guy who merchanted really hard. Uh, he has the level 14 executioner. And uh, yeah, you can see that uh, his knight is developed, his composite bowman is kind of developed, and then he has that baby executioner. So this is the double executioner. Uh, so Frost is also playing the double executioner. Do you want to comment on this build? Sure. I mean, first of all, I think it's, you know, like I said about the merchant and how you can pick up something that can change the trajectory of your season. I think this is a, a perfect example. I think he's very fortunate to have picked this up because based on his cadence, he should have two executioners at level eight. And that six level difference is, is absolutely huge. So I think that's a, a really good find for him. And uh, he's very lucky uh, in terms of the double executioner versus, I guess, what we've defined as the four shard build with uh, one rogue, one axe, one bow, and one knight. I think that's going to be a centric theme to this season to see how it plays out. How are the people who go with two axes going to deal with longer battle scripts, critical hits? Uh, what are they going to do to protect themselves, right? And so I would imagine as a player myself playing double axe, that's something I'm already thinking about. And I would imagine that a player's experience as Azrael is doing the same thing. What can he do? What can I do to um, mitigate that risk while still maximizing the benefits of running two acts, right? So the the HP, the defense, and stuff like that. So okay. it'll be interesting. Yeah. And uh, Shiny, this guy's in your team. Uh, so what do you have to uh, say about his position currently? Because he's being compared to your mercs right now. Would you attack him today? Probably, right? Uh, I mean, looking at it... Probably, I think he'll probably be not like, you know, the first couple attacks, but mm -hmm. he'll be there. I haven't done any of his but I mean, you can see my mercs there right there next to him. I also was <laughs> yeah. lucky enough to find an executioner in the merchant, and so mine outpaces even his. So I think, yes, he will be on my attack list today. Awesome. But when it comes Fantastic. to, like, yeah, even Lancelot is checking out the merchant and alerting Azrael, hey, something's available, and... You know, there's pinging him, you know, spamming his inbox trying to get him, like, hey, there's something available for you. Gotcha. Just more, the whole team's looking out for each other. <laughs> yeah, you guys have a wonderful team. <laughs> so, yeah. I got a question. So, like, last last season, everyone was like, four shard, take my energy. Like, what's the vibe this season? Because, like, four shard is kind of low-key right now. So, uh, who's, like, your guy? Uh, I, I, you know, it's Lancelot and Azrael Lance. right now. Yeah, like, but Lancelot, everybody always roots for Lance because Lance is, you know, the, the nicest guy on the planet. But, like, right now, it, like, but he's been playing a little differently because he's playing late. He's been working and doing school. And so he's kind of playing when all of us are already asleep. So he'll come in, leave all these notes from the night before, being like, yep, I was perfect again today, maxed out, kicking ass. And it's just like, way to, way to go. We wake up and it's just like, way to go, Lance. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 unreal, <laughs> unreal, unreal. It, it's good to see a competition though. It's really good. And then uh, yeah. so we wrapped up Azrael, and then we have Renegade Monk. So Renegade Monk has the distinct honor of having a rare attacking knight. It's right there. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's really interesting as well. I think I, I say that a lot, but HD is a very interesting game. <laughs> so he's got the lean triangle going on, but he's throwing that wrench in there. And I think he's banking on a lot more people not focusing on uh, developing their mounted. So maybe he's thinking he can kind of sneak up on people, backdoor a few people, and that uh, the, the triangle, the 1-1-1 one, 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 melee ranged and def uh, defensive mount will be enough. Um, I think it's interesting. I think, again, it speaks to that um, two Merc for one point, sort of enhancing the creativity of, of what people can do in HD. And it's really cool to see things like this. Like, as we're preparing for this pod today, and we're going through all the different types of setups, it's it's actually, there's actually a lot going on this season. And we'll, we'll break it down as we continue talking. But this is a really good uh, starting point. Yeah, I think this kind of build would be a lot more surprising if he went nine attacks, because then that knight would be level 17 or something. 
that knight would be massive. Yeah. And then it would have been able to get the jump on pretty much everybody on the server. So that's a little thought experiment for everyone back at home. It's if you if you play nine attacks and you get very high level mercs, it makes sense to maybe run one offensive knight as long as it's not your only win condition. Question for you. Random yeah. would you pit that offensive knight if you were him? Like if you were nine attacks, let's just say let's just say you did it with nine attacks. That was one of your first mercs. Would you pit it? Yeah, I would. I would. I would uh, archery range the archer and pit the knight. And yeah. uh, I know that people are not going to be pitting their knights because it doesn't make sense to pit your knight against one guy. So I would just have a very big advantage, kill their enemy archers, and um, especially people playing double axe. Like the knight really doesn't die to axe, so it's only no. the rogues you have to be worried about. And the more exactly. people play double axe, the better you are uh, in that position. So. Yeah, if it's nine attacks, I think it's more possible to play that attacking knight if it's not your only win condition. I think we just developed a new build that no one's playing right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. My original game plan was to keep my buy level 14 mount as the backdoor for a while, sell it, and then get a second bow and just have no backdoor. But until I realized all you have to do is just stick a, a sword on your your guy when you attack me and he's dead so that did that, like that was, i was like oh this is gonna be brilliant but then i thought about it for 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> yeah always cutting corners <laughs> but uh i think this one is not a corner you want to cut yeah because then people could just equip an arrow uh the uh the sword before reset too and just troll you <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> then, yeah if everyone does that <laughs> Then you just run out of people. <laughs> then you'd be attacking target... Striker all season. <laughs> yeah, their oh, only target. Oh no, is... he has mounts. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wh where is Striker? Oh god. <laughs> did I even spy him? I'm like, oh my goodness, I did. I spied him. Uh, Striker has a Duke. That Duke is critical. Ah, okay. Hundred percent. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay, so those are the eleven attack people. Uh, I think um, I think Scotty Dog might have been eleven attacks too, but he got lumped into the by level twenty seven people because of his sort of like half and half build. Uh, let's talk about the ten attack group. We have one seventeen Spartan. So I'm not really sure what he's doing because he doesn't have final build yet. It looks like he's in between because he's got the Cavalier and the Duke. This is really weird. Yeah? Yeah. He, yeah. No, he, I'm just looking at him now. He maybe reached 20 today and sold this Cavalier and Bowman to go for 20? Yeah, I, I don't know. And the Strongman. Oh, and the, the Strongman, strongman got sold as well, yep. Really not sure what this what this guy's thinking. We'll see tomorrow. Yeah, it's I'm, as mysterious as Dolman. Is everyone just trying to fight for, for merchant mercs here? Is that the play? Like, are people <laughs> trying to slow transition? And are we going to just have, like, I don't know, like that poor merchant just going to have a long line of people waiting? <laughs> not sure. Yeah, not sure about this guy. But then uh, we have uh, Shiny here. Shiny with the classic four shard. So, uh, you've spied yourself. I did. <laughs> 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 your mercs are showing twice <laughs> so how's your experience going and uh what are you looking to do today because you haven't done your attacks yet how, how is this build gonna grow um i mean it's been pretty easy so far like the transition as i said last time is usually the easiest part because if you're in transition there's somebody else in transition and everybody else was in transition these last few days so there are you know plenty of targets to to hit today like you know i wasn't eager to sit down and do my attacks because all of you guys at nine attacks are going to have more mature 20s and are over that transition period so there's no there's no easy targets in you guys you know jib and azrael have been like my first two just because they've been behind on everything and they've kind of been easy targets so i'll probably start looking at them i don't i haven't spent the time to start spying down the list and planning out my day yet it's been one of those days mm, yeah but uh it's going to be a lot better once your executioner hits 18 and your bowman hits uh 16 
it's going to feel so nice. Yeah, that having that executioner, goes zero speed. Yeah. having that executioner helps out a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And the you just feel like speed. you're playing HD, yeah. right? Yeah. Like when you have zero speed, you finally feel like okay, right? I can understand <laughs> and predict my battles a little bit better, right? I'm not gonna have random counters like. Uh, even though we all know that the speed is relative, there's just something about that zero that just makes you feel like okay, I can. Yes, it, it's okay now. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was so relieved when I hit. It felt so good. Like, it felt so good. Like I, I had a battle today, so I was helping Jmi, and I forgot who he attacked. It might have been, might have been you actually, Shiny. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you check your logs. And he had both of his axemen get countered in a span of five lines, like to death. Oh. And he won the battle with just a bowman against like someone else's melee. It might have been you or uh, it was somebody. Did he? Is this the one? Yeah, we're looking at it now, right? Yeah, you got through the I hope it was one. you. It was somebody in the top ten. Like I was working on attacks with him. Yes, oh yeah, wait. the one. Yeah. Got merchant executive. Twice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So look at that, right? Like that's crazy. Like I, I, I know it's all relative, but when I'm in a negative speed, I'm like, okay, crap. Like this is not going to happen oh, in my mind. <laughs> wow. Jay yeah. Mai. Yeah. Jay probably. Just told him to do that attack a little too soon. I don't think that was one of his last ones. But that was that executioner can hit the archer. Yep. It's possible. Yeah, that's a scary thing. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. And then we're going to look at some weird stuff. We have Ayoba, Charity and Charna maybe. So Ioba is not that weird. Ioba has three archers. So this is like the three bow. But this looks like our three bow from last season, not your three bow from this season, which you'll talk about obviously later. No, this right? is like the he's three not... bow from this. This is my three bow from this season. But like he's got, hold on. So he, his yours have the accuracy on it. But from what yeah. I remember on the spy, did he go super high? On accuracy, I'm just looking here again. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, okay, I'm not sure. Um, my three bow is really extreme. Yeah. This season, it, it's because he's no okay. So AO two bows have the ones that do more damage, have more accuracy, but there's not like a like he should have over a hundred accuracy if he's doing what you're doing. I think he's configuring these the way you and I did last season, where it's a mixture of damage accuracy uh, okay i see that you know what i mean like look at look at the two right there the both level 11s if he was doing what you're doing now those would have much more accuracy than 994. that's true yeah yeah he's well, doing what we did last bow. season yeah 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 so yeah this is three bow and uh charity is i don't know what this is <laughs> charity if you're watching this we want you on this podcast Oh man, like dream guest, dream all guest. the multis. Just get on here, <laughs> and then like he'll just play the different multis. He'll like change his voice for like each one or something. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this no, is some it's... weird stuff. We've got some melee with some pretty high relative um, to what's out there agility, but low defense, and. <laughs> We've got the mixture of offensive and defensive mount. We've got an an Amazon again with super high agility. So <laughs> I've, I found and I've commented, I think, on one of the channels in the Discord that they tend to allocate in this pattern every season. I find that they've got the low defense, high agility melees. They've got the, you know, really like, actually sometimes really threatening uh, mount. And <laughs> then, but then they also have a defensive mount. So I'm always spying and I'm like, wait a minute. If my knight gets countered like randomly in like I don't know line fifteen, and I haven't killed this duke yet, like I could actually get backdoored here, and like I'm like <laughs> playing all these wild scenarios out. So they're always very like interesting to spy, and it always trips me out because like I always overthink it. Yeah, it makes me feel really insecure too. Like I felt so insecure <laughs> on the day I switched to twenty that I put archer armor, and then I enhanced the armor on my archer. 
I don't I was so though. scared. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like a weird investment. So like I kept the armor on my archer and then once I didn't need it anymore, I like sold it for gold. But like yeah. it's builds like this that just make you feel really insecure. And yeah. You just start playing assume, scenarios out. Yeah, I assume Charna's also just as strange. Uh so okay. Tarna has the double offensive mount. That's how I distinguish okay. the difference between the two. There's some consistency here. Everything is in the same buy level so far. Yep. Nope, Ooh. never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because there's a strong man. Yeah. It's it's either the Amazon or the strong man, and they have like the same stats. I think that'll be replaced by merchant fodder. I see I see them staying at twenty and like selling like I think they really, really again that long line of people waiting outside the merchant's door, like, I think Charity and Charno will be right there at the front. Hmm. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah, we want you on this podcast, okay? All right. The 100%. last 10 attacker is Mark72923. So, this guy is a hybrid berserker. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Enforcer. Yeah. Hybrid enforcer. Offense enforcer. I barely know her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know what he's talking about. Knife guy, <laughs> nighty night, outlaw. <laughs> One of those crits oh, would make me say "ouch" too. Yeah, I love this guy. He's so funny. Um, yeah. So this is the uh, offensive melee build. And uh, he went for a death bow instead of a... Sorry, he went for a knight instead of a death bow. I think a death bow would have made more sense because the death bow definitely would have dodged all the defensive knights that the top players are building. Easy. Like, this one stands to be countered randomly and then, like, backdoored. But, you know, I think, like, this is definitely a, like, if you don't win in 30 lines, you just lose kind of build yeah so you're looking for a lot of green lines and a lot yes. of red kills yeah yeah <laughs> yep. so, but like i just wanted to say sorry i just wanted to say one thing and just a plan yeah. to see you later because i know we're going to be talking about someone else with melee yeah one thing i want us to think about and i didn't talk about this beforehand is what and we don't have to answer it now what do we think is a right proportion of each type of mercenary for front doors uh, offensive melee setup, right? So there's one player who has four, I think it's four whips. And yeah. in this case, he's got two with a berserker and an, a two knifeman, or no, a wanderer, which is, mm -hmm. yeah, two knifemen. So just some, something right. for later. Like, what do we think? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think like it's also like these setups are distinguishable because the other player has just more slots. Yeah. So yeah, this is six slots. I think the other player has eight. So yeah, they got eight. Yeah, I think it's pretty easy. You just look at people's builds, and it's like, I think it, for the people that are playing triangles, it's like eighty percent four shard and twenty percent double axe or something. Yeah, I would and agree I with that. Play along the thing. Yeah, especially like when these uh, these Whitman were buffed. Like I think it's attractive to play more Whitman. Yeah, yeah. Not sure. I think you should have an extra Whitman. Like I think yeah. that Wanderer should be a Whitman, but probably can't yeah. afford to right now. <laughs> so good because you don't want your knife guy to attack the executioner. Then it would just die. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we will see how this build goes. Uh, we still have half of the month left, plus a few more days afterwards. Lots of HD to play. There's a lot of HD. This guy's basically committed to the setup for the rest of the month. Good luck, my friend. I'm excited. Let's see it, Mark. Yeah. All right. So we have the nine attack group coming up, and we split those into the two mercs and the four mercs. Uh, these two approaches are distinguished because the two merc players have two mercs that are really, really high level compared to the other mercs. So this is myself. So I'm going to shut up now and you can critique my my stuff. <laughs> oh, 
Well, I thought it'd be interesting for you to explain it first, but um, <laughs> so obviously last season you did the tribo. I did that as well. Okay. Um, I think we both, I'll be honest, and I haven't, I'll talk about myself later. I don't mm-hmm. like my setup. I just feel like that's what I need to play to try and win. I yeah. like the six. I still believe very much so in the in the tribo setup. Um, I'm not sure if I would have gone as with as much accuracy. I know what you're trying to do. I'm just wondering, like my question, and it's not like it's actually just a genuine question because this is the first time that yeah. we actually are playing something different, right? The first time I copied you, the second time I thought I was a genius, and then we did the same thing. So this is well. like really great that we're. <laughs> You know, like we're really competing against each other and, and, and yeah. we're going about it two very different ways. And I'll be honest, when I spied you, I was like, hmm, I know what you're doing. You're going to be a real pain in the ass to be like if I were to try and attack you at like 24 for my arrows or 28. Like I'd probably think twice about it. But do you think that those bows or have you noticed rather those bows making the impact you want off- on your offensive attacks? No. Uh, okay. And I don't ex- I don't expect these bows to do anything until okay. like the last week. So oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I'll explain the logic of this build. So basically, what I learned is if you play two mercs with uh, nine attacks, you're going to have two mercs that are really really strong, and the two mercs that are really really strong should be your main tank and your main win condition. Everything else has like almost no relevance they just kind of exist as like safety measures so that the berserker is there as a safety measure so i noticed people like i thought people would play a lot of enforcers and whips because they were buffed so i was like okay i'm gonna play the berserker and not two axes the knight exists just to protect the back line so that's just two mercs that just exist and those two archers i know that because they will never be archery ranged they will never catch up in damage to anyone else's main tank so if they never catch up, I might as well not front and pretend like they will because it's just a waste of time. Like that's how I felt playing the tribo the first time is I tried to make those archers into impossible archers that they would never just become. It's not, it's not possible to build them that way. So I was like, okay, this is the only other way to build the archer, which is to make them as accurate as possible and then like the damage doesn't really matter because they'll score some crits and it'll do some damage at the end of the game and a it'll deter people from attacking me especially really suave good-looking content creators with two executioners you know (laughs) 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 but like you know i'm trying to like deter you from attacking me and it was like two executioners okay i'm gonna build two really mean archers they're going to have over 300 accuracy by the end of the season. And yeah, I absolutely. think at every every point, they're going to have double the accuracy of your agility. And you either deal with it by allocating to agility and you give up ground in defense, or you just don't and you get crit. So that's the kind of logic behind this build. I think it's going to help me. It's going to do better than last season. Uh, and I think that, that comes from the realization that these archers will never scale and you should never pretend they'll scale. Yeah, yeah. I I learned the same sort of lesson. I tried as well, and I I was not very gold efficient. And I'd imagine that you probably felt the same at certain points where you're trying to get that, even if it's that second bow. Like I I took my third bow and I just said, oh screw it, I'll just put all damage, and I still couldn't keep up, especially when yeah. defense started scaling higher. And so I think you and I both started adding accuracy after the facts, and we're just like, oh well. You know, it's got 500 damage now and 160 accuracy. Like, maybe this will do something. And really, all it got was mop kills. Um, yeah. Which yeah. is, I define a mop kill as, like, once the wall is broken down, it's attacking archers and mounted and other things like that. And so, yeah. um, I just want to talk to, like, sort of everybody, like, the HD community, and just sort of, again, talk about what you're doing and how it's it's meant to, like, there's a lot of different aspects of HD. And, and some of it is psychological. Like I, I think when the margin is so close um, for victory, those attacks that a player like me would do against you at level twenty-four, level twenty-eight, level thirty-five, like those are typically attacks that the the, the power spike is so high from the new arrows that any top player is going to kill any top player. And so what Phil's essentially done is he's made me really, really think about it. 
because my greatest weakness in my setup is my lack of agility. If he's got these bows, I'm going to have to think about it. I might get lucky and win. I might not. And again, just for everybody, that's that sort of gamesmanship that exists. And, and sort of like when in margins are so thin, I could lose that attack and lose by like three points again. It's like, yep. Yeah, so. and, and to uh, expound on your point on gamesmanship, I, I named the mercs the level of accuracy I have uh, after I play each day. So when you spy it, it's going to be at 186. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to remind you how much accuracy it has. But uh, yeah, this is basically like big Crush of Demons. Like Crush of Demons had that big accuracy archer, but then like only one melee wall. So this is like big Crush of Demons. Yeah, and they're protected yeah. more because he only had the yeah. one melee and you've got two. Yeah, and the the other build would be to have three executioners and one berserker with one knight and one archer. So you either yeah. you either turn those two archers into like two beefy guys or just two crit archers. We'll see. This is a this is a funny build. Uh, I'm confident you... that it's going to be good. Yeah. What about a three two one with one crit archer and one regular archer? And then uh, like... you have three frontline. Yeah, so three front lines, one yeah. damage, and one because like that's another one you could do as well. Yeah, that's another one that can be done. And then the other one is uh, two, two, two. So you have one crit yep. archer, one normal archer, one attack mount, one defense mount. You know, mm. two front lines. Yeah, that's actually not bad. I didn't think about that one. Yeah, that's funny. Um, there are a lot of funny <laughs> possibilities with six mercs, and uh, this is just. Like I just wanted to wanted to redeem myself for the like the garbage season I played last season. So I was like, okay, mm. that's that's the season. That's how many times did Crush of Demons get you on crits? A lot. Oh, damn. A lot. I lost multiple offensives to Crush of Demons. It was gotcha. humiliating. I lost one, yeah. but it wasn't a crit. Weirdly enough. Yeah, it was humiliating. I <laughs> didn't like it. All right. So then Cheech Cheech is playing. Um, Cheech is basically Crush of Demons this season. Yeah, that surprised me, actually, because I, I, I've not played a ton with Cheech, but every time I spy Cheech, I always felt like they were very solid defensively, and they typically ran with archers that had higher accuracy than average. Yeah, and, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So to see one melee, I was kind of surprised, but uh, I, I hope it works out for him. Uh -huh. It's just too stressful for me. <laughs> yeah, too stressful. It's, uh, yeah, it feels uh, like you're, again, walking the tightrope. Yeah. Yeah. But That's I do want to say that is a way for people to still remain efficient with their allocation points, mm -hmm. but still throw some wrinkles in there. And I think that's sort of the mindset that these players have when they run these type of setups. Uh, and that's the philosophy that guides them. So. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, he maxed out today. Yeah, and uh, so we have shiny smirks uh, next to Cheech smirks. Would you attack him? Like, do you think you'd win? Let me see and look here. Um... Yeah. I mean, I think today I'm probably going to attack him. And not really worry about it because my executioner has outpaced him pretty well at the moment. Ooh, but his execution he's got a good executioner. So he's four twelve. Yeah, he's, 412 up, is he's up there with you guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, close to you know, to those level sixteen arrows. Yeah, that's what, you should I mean, be able to get to about four hundred damage. Right. Yeah, that'll make a big difference, you know, probably halfway through my day here. So I mean Maybe I might have leveled up already. Attack. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. This will be a this will be a tough one. This will be a tough one. Four hundred thirteen is a lot. <laughs> yeah, with good agility as well. Yeah, and then, then you have to be careful. Like if you do attack him, that knight has three fifty one defense, so it might kill your knight and then kill your archer. Yeah, that's also a possibility. Like an accident like that can happen. Yeah. So <laughs> he's tough. It's not good value yeah, for sure. <laughs> is my circle higher up than yours? Might be. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I think I think I'm in a good spot because I'm not blocking the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was my logic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm just kidding. 
Um, okay, so those are the two Merc people. And then the four Merc people, we got a lot. Most of them are um, are four shards. Like, we got Lancelot. Lancelot's doing great this season. So let's take a look at... Oh, shoot, we forgot the rat. I'm sorry, the rat. <laughs> um, the rat has the big executioner. And then I think he also... Yeah, this is very similar. Yeah, except that Bowman has a lot of accuracy, not a lot of damage. Yeah, I was going to say I would probably leave that accuracy as is for yeah. a while, actually. Yeah. And I typically build, and I think we you do as well, we kind of look at the agility of what we're attacking. And if, if most melees right now are between 95 and 105, Mm -hmm. for their agility like mine's on a bit of a lower end right now but um you know 104 108 accuracy is good enough right yeah so, so i usually get to 90 and then i can hit the archery range better so like yeah so I, i'm i'm reaching i have the strongest archer like i have the highest level archer in the game so yeah. if i can afford to use those extra points on getting accuracy i can hit the 90 meter much earlier which will then help my growth so it's uh, that early investment. That, I think uh, that matters, especially when the margins right are so right. thin. How do we yeah. utilize that archery range? I've talked about it in some of the videos I've yeah, put out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's really critical. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay, sorry, the rad. We skipped you. Our bad. Forshard. So, Forshard is the uh, winner from last season. He's playing Forshard again. So, this is basically four shard <laughs> <laughs> he's and, just sort uh, of been lurking in the shadows there yeah he's just chilling yeah how is the how is he communicating with like the um the players in your alliance is he like yeah he's still been very active with us and he's been around just, it. yeah i mean everybody's supporting lance right now it seems is where most of our communication is gotcha gotcha yeah i get that feeling i can make sense yeah. it <laughs> It's great though, like it's, yeah, it's like, this guy is one of the kindest people you'll ever meet, so friendly, so cool, and you know what, like, it's it's going to make my job harder, and, and, you know, whoever else is trying to win's job harder, but I welcome the competition, and, and if Lance won this season, I'd be really, really happy for him. And it's way dude. different. We're not like, you know, it's not like we're going over every attack with him, or doing group attacks or anything, He's he's been, like I said, he's been doing it late at night, and just killing it on yeah. his own like i feel like you know him with being with four shard watching your videos being with everybody in that group setting just really kind of yeah. changed his approach to the game this season mm. Elliot, i'm rooting for him just don't pass me man don't stay ahead of me rather <laughs> <laughs> he's already passed you yeah <laughs> I, I know he's passed he's me already passed me what am i talking about <laughs> yeah. lance 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 Let's see, has he played yet? I don't think so. Uh, just checking right now. No, he has. To he that has. end, though. He has. He's yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, he did. Okay, he did 10.07. Yeah, he did. I, yeah. I am interested to see with the Berserker crew, like, how... Because even in the same kind of builds, you can play them very differently. Like, you could... Mm -hmm. Like, how how agile are these going to be? And and I think it's for me as someone who's going with double axe, it's going to be very interesting to watch and see um, how heavy people do go on agility because I think there'll be a, a range. I think there'll be some people who run them a little higher. There's some people who run them a little lower typically. Um, but yeah, even in the same setup, you can have it built differently. Yep, totally, totally. We'll find out. Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll find out. Who we got next? We got next frost okay frost oh, double right. x have you yes. gotten any crit scares yet i don't want to answer this question like you're just i feel like you're setting me up here i'm gonna say i'm gonna say no i don't have any crit scares yet and then tomorrow i'm gonna hit get hit with one so i, I know what you're doing but i'll play along <laughs> it's cool uh to answer your question though kidding kidding aside no um no crit scares yet okay. it is something i really closely monitoring um, I just, just to kind of explain it, I felt last season that my Berserker was too squishy. It was not something that I, made me feel safe. Um, I feel typically more safe when I have defense and HP, 
but do understand that it um, also leaves me susceptible to critical hits. And I know I'll probably get a battle or two where that happens, and I just need to remain composed and understand that's part of the game. But um, especially with a really slow bow, I'm not sure if you've picked up on that either. I've only I've allocated zero points to my bow uh, or in speed. So right now, the way my setup is, is it's going to be long, drawn-out battles, which typically um, favor critical hits. So it's the number one consideration I'm looking at when I do my attacks every day. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so far, so good. And yeah, again, this is, to me, a central storyline of the season. The four-shard build versus double ass. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff. Yeah, I can see the 400 defense. It's uh, pretty chunky. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like it's 450 and like just under 400 now. And it's great, but crits well, don't care about that. Four, well, 446, 447. Kind of rounded oh, up a little. Wow. I'm so like, I'm, I'm pretty tough tomorrow. But yeah. again, crits don't care about that. That 178, that could crit me for like 600 damage. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Don't attack me. No, you're not worth it, man. Low, low, <laughs> low quality target. Super difficult, <laughs> not optimal yield. <laughs> oh, man. This is how HD people insult each other, by the way. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, but uh, politely. And I think it's done out of a place of respect, too. Like, yeah, I mean, it's funny. We've, we've battled these last few seasons. We've also battled in the past, too. But, right. like, I think going back to HD with the way February ended and then you know, competing in March and March didn't go the way you wanted. I think both of us are kind of just like really, and we'll get to it when we talk about predictions. I think we're both really locked in this season. So when we, <laughs> yeah. when we jab at each other like this, it's all out of respect. Our predictions are pretty funny. <laughs> You'll see our predictions <laughs> later. All right. So this is Too Dark Forever. Uh, Too Dark Forever is bonky. Yeah, I'm rooting for this setup. Yeah, this is this is like the big frontline guy, except yeah. he has two knights. So I don't know what he's doing. Oh, I just realized that now too. Like the knight doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, what's he got? Berserker, executioner, executioner. He's got the one bow. The one bow. Like that other knight could have been converted into something, but. Yeah, it could have sure. been an offensive knight, or it could have been another bow. Yeah, I like the I like the idea of a three two one setup, but not with the two mounts. I didn't even catch that when I spied him earlier today. Yeah, I, I thought that was really interesting. But uh, you know, HD is customizable; you can play the way you want. And yeah, uh, yeah, maybe he'll learn something good or learn something bad this season, and then uh, switch it up next season. Absolutely, or not, depending on what he learns. Crush maybe he's in that merchant line too. Yeah, so this is this is the wild guy. This is like the by level twenty bagel, except yeah. not everyone bagel. Sorry, I call I call everything bagels. Everyone bagels. It just <laughs> it's just a personal quirk. Um, how many enforcers is that? One, two, four, three, four, four. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and then there's two mounts. Again, could have been a death bow, and then two two outlaws. Yeah. Yeah. The knight versus death bow thing. Like, I think he actually commented. I'm not sure if it was on our Discord or generally. He did comment. I should have actually pulled that up in preparation for this, but he did actually explain his rationale um, as to why he went with the knight. I just, I don't know if I agree with it. Felt like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. But, but I do is, like the ratio. Is, yeah. This is, melee. A, this is a nice ratio. It's got all even numbers and stuff. Well, he's got yeah, he's got he's got four um, whips and and two knives, which I think a two to one ratio. Whether you mm -hmm. do two one or four two, I think that's kind of what you're looking for, right? Because everyone's going to have an axe. It's just a question of, or well, almost everybody, um, and then it's just a question of again to your point, the eighty twenty rule. Like, is it you know eighty percent rogues and twenty percent axes? Well. I think I think a two to one ratio kind of covers that really well. I like this guy's merc names; they're so cool. Yeah, intense. Rosis. Yeah. 
I don't even know what what those are. It's dairy guys. Like I would, yeah, it's they're cool. He's got it, and he's got them really like. If you look at how he's named them, right? So E for enforcer, and then I think the I is meant to like divide. Um, or no, sorry, one, one, two, three. My bad. Number four. So enforcer number four, dairy guys. That's even more organized than I thought. (laughs) Yeah, this guy is so organized and cool. Yeah, no, I and I love my organization. So, down the line, would you would you fight a player like this? Like, if he was in your attack range, like, would you feel okay doing this? Me with two yeah. axes, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely not, because I, I I'm susceptible to critical hits. I need to sort of see how the numbers scale. If he's able to raise these mercenaries um, to get them to the that frightening level of of accuracy that I'm talking about. But I mean, gosh, even at the end of last season, I think we had, what, 160 agility. So if he's able to get these leveled up a bit, like, I don't know. I wouldn't attack him if I had, unless I absolutely had to. Mm-hmm. Tricky, tricky. All right, who we got next? Oh, Mystic Butterfly. Mystic Butterfly is a really nice guy now. <laughs> yeah, a changed, uh, a changed insect. Yeah. <laughs> Don't not give up Beck. Uh, <laughs> I wish Beck was here, man. That guy just seems absolutely fantastic. But I love Beck. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna message him at the end of the month, try to get him back playing next month. In like a real yeah. alliance. Absolutely. Shout out to you, Beck. Yeah, shout out Go to join you. Chicken. Yeah. Go join Chicken. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is a typical portrait. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is yeah. This is typical for shard. I don't think there's anything like we need to point out here. This is the even most... the allocations are very for shardish. Yeah, it's yeah, terrible. yeah. Maybe for shard is Mr. Caterpillar. I don't know. HD's great mysteries. Yeah. So, is this guy? What is this guy? This is the for shard. For shard. Except yeah. the berserker is really agile. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about earlier. He's he's kind of what I was thinking about, right? Like he's yeah, he's only got ninety one agility on the executioner, but he's got a super agile. So it's almost like he's playing to those extremes to really maximize yeah. what the identity of each unit is. But he's got damage on the berserker. I don't know, man. Two twenty nine point four. He allocated to damage. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know if relying on like a heavy counter is a great strategy per se. Hmm. Unless it was an accident. Yeah, it could have been an accident, but with the speed being lowered, it, I don't think that's going to help you do anything except for a very rare circumstantial counter. Yeah, I feel like there's some points wasted there, but yeah. it's interesting though. Yeah, fascinating. Zeratol. So. Yeah, Zerato is, is bulky. He has the um, two executioner build. Ah, there we go. This is what I wanted to see. A three, two, one. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, this is this is a fun guy. Oh, look, look at the accuracy archer. It's so nice. Oh man, be up there. It's up there. Up there. Uh, yeah, one sixty three. I'm sure you want a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. So this is like this this thing will like give you a random crit and it's gonna piss you off someday. Absolutely. Especially since he's got that extra layer of security. Like these his battles, if he if he, if his defense scales correctly, his battle should go last a, quite a while, even if you're attacking him. Mm-hmm. To get through all three of those and not get crit. Oh that's a lot of fun. Future me is gonna <laughs> love attacking him. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he doesn't like make it into your attack range for long. Yeah, I think he's seriously. still like he's still far out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, man. And uh, this guy plays normally anti-meta, but this has been surprisingly chill. This is double axe. Yeah. Um, has he talked about it in your alliance chat? He's he's a knights of the round, Derek. Is he? Because he contributed a lot to the conversation. 
there, yeah, he's definitely active. He's definitely in there. And I think today there was a lot of activity, but like, you know, I was busy most of the day, so I missed all the conversation today and just haven't caught up yet. But yes, he is active. Yeah, because he's typically oh, cool. like Mr. Anti-Meta. High bar level. I think he went 27 last season. Can you be honest, guys? He did. He did. He did. He did. Yeah. He's probably disenchanted by what the results were, and I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't blame him either. That's wild. All right. Yeah. We got any more people, or is that it? I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. I think that's it. Uh, take a look at Jib one more time. <laughs> you know, it was glory and that crazy battle log. All right. So he's been chipping in on our his... lines Discord, actually, Jib. Jib? Yeah, yeah he said something on Discord about... the other day. I yeah, like, he wow, talks on talks. our Illuminati Discord now, too. He was like, yeah, so. Yeah, how is he feeling about himself? Like, he's obviously made these choices. Like, does he feel confident behind those choices? I'm not sure. He makes a lot, he does a lot of self deprecating humor. He'll just sort of make fun of himself and, like, he'll be like, oh, idiots like me are going by level 27 or this or that. And I'm just like, you're not an idiot. You're one of the best players that's ever played this game. You're not fooling anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, we'll see, though. I mean, he's 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 always a fun player. He's one of my personal favorites. Yeah, he's hilarious. I love him. Um, he said that like in the uh, publicly too in the Discord about like about level twenty seven and how it's stupid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, yeah, he's just. I guess he's doing it. So here's an interesting question for you guys. How does the competition feel this season? Like, does it feel challenging? Uh, do you feel like there's a lot of pressure? What's it like playing at this point in the game? For me, the pressure st starts right now because up until now, I've been able to avoid attacking all of you nine attackers. You were never in the range that I had to attack down to. But it looks like, like today is that turning point where you guys are gonna jump past a couple of those and I'm really going to have to start sweating through attacks because you guys are in that range and I have to start attacking. But there's just no way I'm able to do that yet. So the pressure starts for me now. And this is where you guys may... This is, I mean, this is why you play this, this strategy because you come up and we all know it's the... Whatever the slowest horse gets the blood from the stone, whatever the yeah, saying I'm looking for. Worm, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two stones, one bird. Yeah. Yeah, one of those. Cool. And uh, yeah, Frost, I think uh, how I, are you feeling? I feel like good about myself, but I think what, like, because, like, in the past, I've, I've gone back and analyzed some of my seasons, and both seasons that I lost, and I consider anything other than one a loss, um, <laughs> It is what it is. I've played the game for a yeah. long time, right? Me and it's too. just like, me too, me too. Uh, I feel like I'm playing well. And I feel like when I look at those last couple of seasons, particularly February and March, I was always at an allocation disadvantage, right? Like in February, I did the triangle, but I also had a salary point. In March, I did six mercs, but I also had a salary point. So I was always like just a little bit behind. This season, I didn't do that. This season, I said, screw it. I'm going to just go one salary, four mercs. Anyone who has six mercs with no salary, we've we've expended the same amount of allocation points on our armies, whether it's four mercs with gold, whether it's six mercs without, and now we just stack attacks and see how it plays out. And so I, I feel good about how I'm doing, but I'll be honest, I'm looking at like the current top 200 and I didn't expect as many people to max as they did today. I didn't expect Lance to max out today, right? Like I didn't expect necessarily Cheech to max out today. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of competition, I think that just sort of as a sidebar, as we, you know, we have these podcasts and we we record ourselves playing and we have conversation about HD and I'm literally here giving away my secrets, so to speak, to people who may not know and they watch <laughs> and learn and, and use them. And I'm aware of it. Uh, but I do think that the engagement, the conversation has led to a more competitive um season so far like i don't i feel good about my play but i don't normally i'd be like yeah i got this but i, I don't necessarily feel that way right now yeah the uh competition makes us better 
And uh, yeah. I'm really happy that we're doing all this content and we're all these players are way more detail oriented this season compared to other seasons. I've got some exclusive like, yeah. breaking news. Lancelot just recorded his attacks and is uploading them right now. So he did his own little overview of his mind for the day. That'll be exciting to see. I want to see this. I'm watching it it tomorrow. First thing (laughs) I do when I wake up, I'm watching this. Once once that's posted, I'm watching that. Uh, John, (laughs) thanks for doing that, man. I I think it would really be valuable to see and hear other people's perspectives. Um, I, I think that regardless of how long you've played or how good or not good you are, I think everybody has something to contribute. And you've been kicking ass, and I want to watch it. You've been doing great. Yeah, super clean. Yeah, it's always really good to watch another clean player play clean, because you get to see like what things they do similar and what things they might do differently. And then you can learn, oh, there's more than one way to be clean. Yeah. You know, really interesting. I want to I watch this too. Um, my seasons felt pretty good. Uh, I conceded a few points transitioning, which I think is pretty normal uh, because uh, now it's so easy to get more mercs. You know, you click one button and you get two mercs. So uh, rushing with two mercs is very, very hard. Um, I do it all the time, but it doesn't feel good. And that's where the deficit comes from against Lance. It's that, you know, that one day where I'm raising baby mercs that I'm missing a night. So. You know, targets targets are hard. But uh, now that my build is final and I'm locked in, I actually feel really good about the season. I feel like uh, maybe some of the battles last season were a little bit unlucky, but by giving myself two stupid crit archers, I've kind of manipulated luck to the best of my ability. So I feel okay about it. Like, I feel like on average, I should be luckier than other players because I've kind of allocated towards that. So that's kind of the feel I get. Uh, I'm not really scared of competing against Lance. Uh, I know he's playing very, very clean right now, but I feel like I have a lot of experience playing this game, and I think that experience is going to help me compete against him. Uh, He also has a lot of experience playing this game, but uh, we'll see how he handles you know, worrying about his attacks every day, especially when he has to attack other people that play similar to him, like the other four shard builds. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how he navigates that. Uh, I'm a little lucky because I don't have the four shard build. I'm not really attacking anybody with the same build, so maybe that'll feel better. I'm not sure. We'll find out. But I've been feeling pretty good. Okay, so this is the spiciest part of the the section now uh, what are your predictions what are you what are you thinking uh i guess shiny what are you what are you hoping for uh, i i kind of tiered mine into like that nine attack crew and making their way up to the top and i am leaning towards the nine attack crew and i'm gonna pick lance just because it's lance and he's in my alliance so you know i'm gonna yep. be a homer and say it's gonna be lance and then you two to follow <laughs> And then, you know, I like what Four Shard's doing. And then Cheech and Elation, we just talked about, you know, they have the Four Shard going and they're going to be, you know, Four <laughs> Shard's proven to be strong and that setup is going to be strong. And then, you know, I'm not sure if Azrael, Jib, and I are going to hang on to our top 10 spots, but I want to believe that Azrael and Jib will. And then I would love to believe that I do as well, but I would have more faith in those two than I have for myself. And then you have let, a perfect season so far. So far, it's been perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're perfect so far. We'll see, I, like I said, the pressure starts today. You know, it's it's so easy up until this point for me, just because I, I feel like I thrive in transition. It's that end game decisions that just don't go my well. I just don't set up well for the end game. It's not It's the decisions I make now that that usually bite me in the ass. But then, like, <laughs> Bagel's going to be my wild card for the top 10 this season. You know, she got 11th last season, going by level 27 with that Bagel, with that everything Bagel, or every person Bagel, whatever you called it. <laughs> but Everyone Bagel. It seems to be a lot more lean this season, and yeah. I think she was by level 27, like, yesterday, or two days ago now, right? Like, which is unbelievably quick. So, I think yeah. we're... We're going to be in trouble. Like, nobody's going to be able to attack her, obviously, but she's got time. It's, we're at, what, 15, 16 days? 17? Is it 31 days in April? I don't know. 
but I don't remember. She's 30. got time. Yeah, 30, 30, so 30, 30. 16 days is still a lot of time. <laughs> Absolutely. Gotcha, gotcha. Where's Butterfly? Uh, you know, I, we'll, we'll see. You know, when you are when you soften up, maybe you just don't have that tenacity you need to win a, a top 10 spot in High uh, Descent. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sucks. So, uh, yeah, how'd your, uh, how'd your predictions go? <laughs> Mine? Yeah. Well, um, you got to bet on yourself. <laughs> yes, um, I see that. I think, so I've just, I've got myself uh, in the top spot. I think it's no secret that, you know, this sort of three season arc now of trying to get a win. <laughs> like the last full season I played before I came back, I'd won. Came back in January, was completely clueless, forgot how to play HD. You know what happened in February, and then Four Shard came out of nowhere and surprised everybody. So yeah. I'm really locked in this season. I'm spending a lot more time and focus, and uh, I'm going to do everything I can, man. And and just you know, so I've got I've got you as as second. It, and again, it could flip flop. You'll probably say the opposite, and I would hope <laughs> that you say the opposite. Yeah, you better not put anyone else but yourself at the top. Um, and then I've got Butterfly. Butterfly looks pretty strong. And I'm rooting for you, Derek. I, you know, you are perhaps, you know, if the HD seasons were two weeks, you'd you'd be the YB. <laughs> you always you always kill it. And every time there's like one. <laughs> Listen, it's it's not meant to be an insult. I just say that you play really really well, and then there's one mistake. Yeah. It's usually like one mistake, and then it kind of goes downhill. And so I'm honestly like, as a friend, I've known you for a long time. And I'm hoping that that mistake does not happen. And I've got you in that top five mix as well. Yeah. Um, and then sort of, I've got a group of people that uh, I've got as well. So Lance, Azrael, Forshard, Cheech, uh, Elation, and Zeratul sort of rounding out that group. It's not to diminish any of them. They're all really great players and could very well be in that top five, could very well beat me. But uh, if I'm being asked on whatever day 14, that's kind of how I see it playing out. Gotcha. So you have Lance kind of at the bottom tier, but he's winning right now. Do you think he's going to fall apart or kind of loosen up with the attacks? I think it's kind of what you talked about. So again, I very try to be as objective and respectful as possible. I just think that yeah. when you're at the top and you're competing for that number one spot, the margin is so thin the little decisions that you have to make, it could be something as simple as an incorrect attack sequence. And now all of a sudden you're not strong enough to win a battle. I, I don't know if he has that experience. Um, I know he's got a, a great group of like veteran players and perhaps, you know, Knights of the Round, you know, I think I said this before we recorded, I, I consider them the greatest alliance in HD history just because of the culture, because of placements and of players they've had. So not to diminish any of that, there's, very much going to be a, a spirit bomb kind of uh, energy that, that goes into what he does. I just, I question if he's going to, when it's like nut grading time, like I always say, is he going to be able to make those decisions? And I don't know. And I, I hope he proves me wrong, but yeah. uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. I think we'll learn a lot about his thought process watching that video. Yeah, that, that's yeah. true. I should probably yeah, be asking this question can... like two hours from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'll just... He could be a like, killer, and I'm like, oh, crap, I'm screwed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, right. Yeah. And uh, I think, like, that mistake you were talking about with, like, shiny stuff, I think that was mostly averted this season by not buying a bunch of knights. So... And that merchant pickup was much, too. Yeah, like, that was good. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were chatting about it. Yeah. Oh, I remember that's that. great, man. I couldn't buy it. Like I, otherwise I would have like griefed. <laughs> but like yeah, I had I had like no ability to buy it. Um so for me I I basically I listed the top 10. It, this is just based on my feeling. Like I could be completely wrong. So I have confidence in my own gameplay. I think I'm going to win. Um, and, and of course, I think it would be kind of a disaster if I didn't, because I don't know why I would be playing then. Um, because, uh, yeah, I have like 
I don't think any of us has lost an attack. Uh, I don't plan on losing too many attacks, so definitely try to keep the top spot. I got Frost second, uh, Shiny third, because of that uh, really good executioner boost that he has. Uh, I put Azrael fourth. Uh, so Azrael is always winning most of the time, but then he kind of falls apart. Uh, that, I saw that last season where he started making mistakes, but this season, I don't think he's made any major mistakes. Like, he's been playing super, super clean. And this is what, like, a good 11 attack player looks like uh, this season. So I think he's going to maintain his lead for a much longer time. And over time, the mercenary levels are going to even out and kind of uh, equalize. And I think that's when the 11 attack advantage is going to show. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, we think, uh, I think we get our 12th attack tomorrow. So we'll be on par with him, but with, like, a st yep. slightly stronger build. So we'll see where it goes. We have to make up about 600, 700 points. <laughs> so, you know, it's not going to be easy, but I think it's going to be possible. Uh, then he I does Butterfly. also low run lower agility on his guys, too. I could see him getting crit if he continues that, but... Yeah. Oh, man, now you let him know. That's okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. Double Executioner. Double Executioner, I think, is just low agility in general. Um, yeah. And then I got Mystic Butterfly as fifth. I think out of the players, like, I have sixth Lancelot, seventh Forshard, eighth Cheech. And uh, I think Butterfly has the most competitive experience out of uh, these players. So I just, out of those four, I, you know, put him fifth. And then uh, Lancelot, I put six uh, ahead of Forshard because he's currently ahead of Forshard and with the similar build. Uh, Cheech. I put up there as well, but uh, I'm really nervous about his like one Merc frontline. I think it, it's a little bit sketchy. I don't want to, you know, ever put myself in a position to play that build. So I think uh, it'll be really interesting to see how he navigates it and avoids critical hits. Um, but I know like melee Mercs are more gold intensive than archers because you can only allocate damage, right? So if he has only one gold intensive Merc, maybe he can spend more gold on other, other Mercs. So maybe that'll be good for him. Uh, and then I have Jib as number nine. So Jib is really hard to predict because he's by level 27 tomorrow, apparently. And, and um, yeah, I have no idea where to even put him because it's... Uh, hold on. It, did my Discord stop? I'm not sure. <laughs> nope, I can hear you. Oh, fantastic. All right. So, yeah, I have no idea where to put him, but uh, I feel like he's Jib. He's going to make it work somehow. I just don't see him raising baby Mercs and keeping up with uh, people with established builds. And then I put Zeratol, 10th, uh, because he's Zeratol and he, he knows how to play the game. So that's the kind of logic I had, but uh, could be completely wrong. Donut could win. You know, who knows? So, yeah. Interesting endgame. We got a lot of four shards. A lot of four shards. HD can very much be a game of, uh, you know, copy paste or monkey see, monkey do. Um, you know, when someone proves something to be successful, and anyone who's competitive takes notes, I did it. And uh, there's no shame in it. And mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting, though, to see again, you know, Rogue Axe versus Axe Axe. What happens in the last week of the season? Am I getting crit like crazy? Am I going to be up there in that HD Rage channel crying about crits? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It's... Uh... All right, let's make a pact, okay? When we meet next week to, like, wrap up the thing, we're going to have zero offensive losses. I can't confirm or deny that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is honestly like, this is probably as comfortable as I've felt um, in any of the seasons I've been back. And that just means that I could be like one day away from an absolute disaster. So that's the, the beauty of HD. I could be very sad next time I come up here. Um, but that's okay. Me too. Attack me anytime. Yeah. 
All right. Any uh, last words? Any last comments? The uh, the last thing I guess I want to say is just um, keep up the activity. I know there's been a lot of conversations, a lot of chats and, and activity and engagement. I think it really um, serves the community well. I think it helps us as individuals in our game. And I think, you know, when you're able to talk it out, it helps you and you're able to help others as well. I, I feel like going back to something we talked about earlier, this is a very competitive season and we're seeing, you know, new competitors sort of enter that arena. Like I'm looking at a guy again, like Lance. And um, I think that is sort of a sign of, and when you look at four shard as well, last season of what activity and engagement can do. So let's keep growing the game and let's, let's continue to communicate and, and uh, good luck everyone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I noticed Except a lot. me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed players are more and more paying attention to really small details. And I think the average level of competitive player is much higher, uh, especially Agreed. compared to the the first season I came back, I think it was in January, right? But that shorter season, I feel like it didn't require that much effort to win. But now this season requires effort every day. And sometimes if, even if you put in effort every day, you might not win. So... It's definitely way more competitive now and way more enjoyable. Cause like the whole appeal of HD is playing against really smart people that think about stuff that you never thought about. Like I never thought Jib would do this with the with the eleven attacks in twenty seven. I just didn't think it yeah. was a thing. Right. And then and then he just was like, No, it's a thing. And I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so tons of smart people making smart decisions consistently that's what you're up against in hd i think that's why it's so good yeah all right we we good yeah we're good we're having a we won our attacks today having a good night shiny hasn't played uh yeah I'm running yeah logging time. on to see you max <laughs> l was just like oh man i gotta do it again like <laughs> that speaks to the competitive nature of, of what hd is right you log on every day and you're like all right, what did Forshard do today? What did what did C E three do today? Oh shit, they maxed out. All right, let's lock in. Let's do let's get to the spies and you know, it's it's uh a lot more of that. A lot of fun. Yeah. All right, peace guys. It's been fun. I see you next week. Good luck, everyone. We will not lose any attacks. <laughs> no promises. I might get crit tomorrow. By me. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.